Today, I have some beautiful Rustic Cottage Thrift Clips for you. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. I'm from Southern Alabama. For the first flip, I have this cute little bird. This looks like a clock frame. I'm not sure exactly what it is. I have a little bird nest and some reindeer moss from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna take this little nest and it's almost made out of a really, really fine, like a vine or something, like twigs. So it's flexible and I'm just gonna kinda of squish it down a little bit so it's more like an oval so that it will sit down in this clock frame. I'm going to put this little thrifted nest in the little thrifted clock frame and just use a little hot glue and press it to keep it down in place. I'm gonna let it cool and then to make it look rustic and cottagey, I am going to add some of this beautiful green reindeer moss. I do live in the country, as I mentioned, in southern Alabama, so we get a lot of this moss underneath our trees that grows kind of on the ground, and I think it's really pretty to add. It gives it a little extra texture, a pretty little element, maybe not so expected, and it's always nice to have something unique in your projects. So, I'm just adding it here and there, just like it would grow onto our trees. Until I get the coverage that I like. I like it like this. I don't want it to be completely covered. You can use little sticks or twigs, or you can use Spanish moss if you want to. And if this isn't your style, you don't have to put any of this on the outside of your nest. You could just leave it plain. I'm just gonna place my little bird in there. He's got metal feet that I tried to pull off. They won't come off, but he fits nicely. Between his tail and his feet, he sticks down in that nest without needing any glue. So that means I'll be able to use him again. And I love being able to reuse my projects, break them down and use them again. So I'm gonna take some of these little ferny looking pieces of greenery that I have left. They're really just scraps. And I'm gonna add those around here and there over this metal frame. I'm using hot glue here. It's gonna work fine for this project, which will be indoors. But if you wanna put any of these projects, maybe on your screen porch or outside, you wanna use an adhesive more like E6000 or the Fix-All glue, um, or like, you know, something like that. Gorilla glue maybe in your hot gun, your hot glue gun, just to make sure nothing melts away. I'm just gonna continue to embellish this a little bit over the metal and a little bit over the nest. Now, you might not be able to find a frame by itself while you're thrifting, but that is totally okay. You can pick any frame, um, any clock, and just take the insides out. Usually it just takes a couple of screws and then you can pull the whole inside out. What do you think about it so far? I could totally leave it like this. But for me, I love to keep adding beautiful little pieces of greenery and little pieces of flowers. And I'm not entirely sure what this would be called. I don't know if you call it a flower or not. They're just mossy looking things. These little tiny pieces of picks that I have. And there's no pattern. It's just kind of random. You just put it where you like it. You know how nature grows. You know, when you're taking a walk, you see all kinds of stuff. And it's placed exactly where God wanted it to be. So I'm going to place mine right where I want it to be. We like to make our pieces our own, right? Now, to make it a starry night, I'm going to just add this little strand. This is cork lights, but you can use the little lights from Dollar Tree if you want to. I did thrift these lights, believe it or not, a whole package of them. And I'm just going to thread them through the back and press them into the front of the frame and just use a couple of little dots of hot glue to hold it down. Look at it when the lights are off, y'all. It is so cute. I love this. This is really cute. It'd be so cute sitting in a window. So here's our before and our after. I'm part of the Thrift Flip Road Trip with Teresa and Trish and Kay. It's an open challenge. You can join anytime the second Saturday of every month. All right, number two. I'm going to use some chalk paint, a chippy brush. 
I'm going to use some of these battery operated pillar candles and these happen to be uh, the Ikea brand. Mine were thrifted in this beautiful little thrifted, I don't know, floral candle holder. It's uh, not real silver. It's um, kind of black underneath. So I decided that I would go ahead and make this a little bit more of a cottage style. So I'm going to add this with my chippy brush lightly just kind of dry brushing it over the petals. I'm going to try to get in between the petals and I'm going to get on top of the petals and inside the little cup part. So once I got the top part, I'm going to flip it over and work on the back. You can use this technique with any type of a tarnished fake silver piece if you would like. I'm going to just take these little petals and pull them apart and just add the dimension back to this little piece. It was kind of crushed, probably in a box when somebody donated it and it got kind of mashed together. Okay, so now I'm gonna take these little pillar candles and I will remove the tags, by the way, y'all do take the tags off. You can use a little bit in the bottom like of a um, sticky tape or some putty or something like that to hold the candle still but there's no real you know risk of a fire hazard with these because they are fake and i love that works perfect in my house because i have kids so here's the before and the after on to project three and four because this is kind of a combo i found this gorgeous washboard i have had this thing for probably a year it has some damage the feet or the legs down there are not the same length. It looks like something has chewed away at it. Probably a squirrel in somebody's attic. I cleaned it up as good as I could and now I'm just going to measure so that these feet will sit flat on the floor. Got to use the smallest or the shortest leg as a guide and then I'm going to cut both of them down just with my miter box and saw. Gonna cut that on down and then I'm going to sand it off so there's no splinters and it looks nice and finished and you never know that there was any damage on those legs. Same thing, both sides. Get it nice and smooth. Okay, so I love the patina on here. I love that rust on there and the wear down all over the wood but I need to preserve that rust so that it doesn't flake all over the place and that I can clean it easily. I'm gonna just take some Mod Podge and another chippy brush here, and I am just going to coat this thing down. I'm gonna get all in between the ridges, also in the little cracks against where the wood is, and then because I was afraid that dust from the rust would smear a little bit, I saved that rough part for last. I'm going to just use my little tool here, my little heat tool, and I'm going to dry this glue. You can use a hair dryer. You can set it in front of a fan if you want to do it quicker, or you can just put it aside while you work on other crafts. Once it is dry or close to being dried, I'm going to add a little bit of my antiquing wax into a cup with another chippy brush. And I am just going to swipe it back and forth all over this frame. I'm going to put it on the sides of the frame. I'm going to put it on the top of the frame. And I'm going to add a little extra attention to the corners and where the pieces of the wood meets because that's where it would collect dust. That's where it would age normally. And I wanna keep that look, you know, keep the look of it being aged. I don't want a solid color here. So I'm gonna continue along, get right down in all of those little cracks. I'm not adding a lot of paint. Then I'm gonna go back with a damp cloth and just wipe it down so that it smears all those ridges out and kind of softens the lines that I created when I was putting that on there. It just kind of blends it out and it looks so much better. Yep, this is a better look, I think. I'm just showing you again, be sure that you wipe down on the insides too. And this is the look that we have created. 
To put a hanger on the back, I'm just gonna add one of these saw tooth hangers, a little bit of my fix all from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna place it down approximately where the center would be. And then using a little hot glue, I'm gonna give it some quick support right over where the nails would go and allow it some time to dry. So for the next part of this project, we're gonna work on a little wreath. My pieces are all thrifted, all of the pieces you see and the wreath. I'm going to pull these apart and cut them into pieces that are fairly the same size and shape. And then I'm going to start placing them down into this wreath. This is one of those vine, I guess, wreaths. And so you don't have to use glue necessarily to hold your pieces or any wire or any other type of thing because a wired piece of greenery or floral will press straight down in here and will hold itself pretty well. Again, if you're gonna be using this for outdoors, you wanna give it some more support, you wanna use some glue, something like that so that the wind doesn't blow anything away. But I'm gonna keep these pieces inside. I really, really love the look of this. And then I'm going to add that same greenery that we used on the project before on the little clock bigger pieces of it though and I'm just going to place it around my wreath until I get the fullness that I like. So I don't count here with doing this type of a wreath because I like the cottagey rustic wild look. And then I am just going to add in some more of those little green, they look like tiny roses but that's not what it is, it's more like a seed pod of some type. So I'm going to add those all around. This is going to coordinate very nicely with our first project with a little bird. So I'm just going to fluff it out a little bit and then any places that have a little bald spot, I'm going to take one or two little random pieces from the picks that I had left over and I'm just going to glue those in so that it's pretty much symmetrical, you know. And then here's kind of a flat spot, so I'm going to add a piece in here. See, it kind of fills it out. Then these had some really pretty little berries, and I'm just going to add those in. And then I can just decide what I want the top to be and what I want the bottom to be, how I want it to hang. And I love the look of this. Nice and full and flyaway and wispy and rustic. I'm going to take just a hanger that I had off of another project. I'm going to push it down into there, and I am going to hot glue it. My neighbors are building a house next door, so if you hear a bunch of noise, that would be my dog barking at the construction workers. Okay, so I'm just going to take that over the back. I'm going to slide it straight down through where our hook is. And then pretty much in the center here, I'm going to add some hot glue and a little piece of paper or construction paper right over the back. You can just use a scrap and that's going to hang it. And then you can just push it toward the center. And look at this little beauty. Now I can use this piece and I've been hanging on to it forever. So I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to make something wonderful from these pieces. Love it. There's the washboard before and after. On to the next project, number five. I found this little, I think it's a bill organizer or mail organizer. And it's really lightweight and I love the look of it. It's, it's pretty. So I'm just going to start by removing the little hanger that had seen better days. I'm gonna take my hot glue and go along the bottom because as you saw before, those little slats can move freely up and down and I don't want them to do that. I want them to be locked into place. So I'm just gonna use the hot glue right up against the border and the edge of those so that nothing comes loose. I've got my little skinny brush here I like to use this on projects that have a lot of slats or like wicker type things and baskets because they get in all of the cracks. But you can use a soft shoe brush, anything like that to clean your objects or you know if you want to use Swiffer or something you could. After it's clean I'm going to spray it with this Rust-Oleum. I give it two good coats and leave it in the sun to dry. And I did leave it outside for about an hour to fully dry after the second coat. While that's drying, I'm going to look at my crap foam. You can get yours at Dollar Tree. I will end up using a white foam that I thrifted. 
These are some flowers that a friend gave me. She took them out of some greenery so she could redo her projects. So this is what it looks like painted. And now I'm gonna use some burlap to make sort of a backing behind the little wicker crisscross there. I'm just gonna measure about what I'm gonna need for each of those little pockets and then cut it down. I'm gonna take a piece of cardboard and this is from the uh, one of the Dollar Tree calendars. I always save this stuff. It's perfect for projects, little extra things. I'm just gonna kind of fold it and press down where I think I'm gonna to need to cut this and make it like a little guide. Then I'm gonna cut out my piece, test it out to make sure it's going to fit in the little pocket and it fits perfectly. I don't even have to glue it. Yes, I love it when that happens. Then I'm gonna take my burlap and just begin to wrap it around this piece of cardboard. I'm using tape here. Uh, it's like a masking tape. I'm just using tape instead of hot glue because I do not wanna burn my fingers off and you will with this type of project. So the tape works best and nobody is going to see it. I'm gonna take the bottoms and kind of fold it like you would a present or a gift and just add more tape. Removing a little bit of excess. And this is gonna hold it just fine for what we need. And this is what it's gonna look like right behind our little wicker, our little crisscross, whatever that is there, whatever pattern. And I'm just gonna press it into place. No glue required. I love it. See, we put those in there because I don't want my floral foam showing. So this is a perfect way to hide it, and it gives it, again, that rustic look that I'm always going for in my home. I'm gonna take the block, and I just use the big one and cut it right down the middle with my ruler. And rather than gluing it and glue dripping all over my project, I've got some of these wreath pins, or I don't know exactly what they're called. You feel free to comment below and let me know what these are called. But they work perfect for this. I just kind of like straddle them over a piece of the wood and then go straight into the block and it holds it perfectly. I'm gonna take my longest picks for the bottom pocket and just start placing those in as is. So they have greenery on the bottom and they have a long wispy top. I love that. I think it's perfect for this project. They're so dainty, but they're full and they just, I love these. But you can use whatever flowers you like. I'm just gonna continue around until I get it as full as I like. And I'm gonna put some right down in the space between where the, the foam is and the side of the little pocket. If you wanna use glue to secure these down, just to make sure, then you can certainly do that, but you don't have to. They stayed very nicely for me, just like this. And then for the top piece, for that top pocket, I'm gonna cut these down. I'm gonna cut the greenery sections away from the flowers, just like this, with my little clippers. Don't ruin your scissors. Then I'm going back in with my pins and securing those to the back so they don't wobble around on the bottom and the top. Love these pins. I thrifted them, but you can get these at craft stores. With, They probably don't cost very much at all. And then once they're secure, I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my flowers in the back. And for me, these types of flowers, there's really no particular pattern that you use. Um, I'm just looking for equal fullness at the, at the end, you know. I'm just putting my greenery in the back putting a little bit of the greenery in the front, but I want the little flowers to be the highest um, section in this top section. I want them to be the tallest part. And I like that it's graduated, that I have the little short things on the top and that I have the longer ones on the bottom. Again, make this your own. That's what my channel is all about. Now I'm gonna make a little bow here. This beautiful ribbon is a linen blend that I got from burlapfabric.com. I love to use this for bows that are kind of small because you don't have to do a lot of fluffing. There's no wire in it, but it gives a really pretty look. 
I'm just gonna make a very simple bow. You saw how I did that. And then I'm gonna make a few knots in the back to hold my bow together so that it can withstand a little bit of pulling and fluffing. And right over that spot that's missing a slat, I'm just gonna tie it right down. And now you'll never even know that there's anything missing. Don't you love that? I love that. I love it so much. I'm gonna do a double knot. Certainly feel free to add a little glue if you would like, but I'm, I'm satisfied that this is gonna stay in place. And then dovetail your ends to whatever length you like. I uh, had them a little bit longer originally, but decided that I would go a little bit closer to the length of the little basket there, or the pocket. And I wanted to add a little more greenery to the top of this bow. So I'm gonna add two pieces of greenery and a little flower. Y'all be sure that you watch everybody in this playlist. This is such a fun, open collaboration, and you're gonna find the links to the ladies that I mentioned before in the description box below, as well as the playlist link. Be sure you check everybody out, give them some love and support, and if you go from my channel to their channels, let them know that I sent you. Isn't this pretty? So to hang it, I'm going to just make a very simple little tie, you see? Very simple, just a loop. And then I'm going to use a little hot glue on the back, press it down and hold it in place. Here's the before and here's the after. I believe in you guys, I know that you can do these. If you don't have items to, that are thrift flips, maybe, maybe you don't have a good thrift store, you can always use something that someone has given you. You can use something that is on the side of the road. You can use something that you already have and give it a second life. So many options. I don't even know which one of these is my favorite, but I really like all of these. Thank you so very much for stopping by. I appreciate you all. Believe in yourself. We all have creativity in us. I'll see you again soon. Bye.